Do you want to get three yeah. seconds? Or? Well, just, just okay. I'm here with Clint Howarth, and we're going to talk about millions of genes with Python and Jython. This looks like an interesting project. Uh, what would you like to tell us about us, Carl? Well, at the Broad... So, my name's Clint Howarth. I'm a software engineer at the Broad Institute. And in the genome sequencing and analysis program, we've been using Python and Jython in production for eight years or more. Um, we started off as being a Java Jython shop, and over the years, we've really progressed toward, you know, moving to a pure Python application. And I'd like to talk a bit about how we've been using Jython to help us study uh, bacteria and viruses. So, in the beginning, when we started this work, we really wanted to be able to give the scientists access to our production data. So, you know, not just through SQL queries or, you know, a visualization application, but really be able to dig in and, you know, get their hands on these genes in a digital sense. And so with the, with the cool Jython interpreter, we can use the, you know, we can connect directly to an Oracle database and give people live interaction with these objects that live in the database. But the thing that's really cool about it is not just that they can pull out fields that are stored in the database, but since each object is rendered as a full class, they can actually ask that data questions. They can ask two genes whether they overlap, you know, via native method calling. And that's a, a really powerful method of discovery for scientists. We actually use that logic in the sequencing, annotation, and publication of all of our genes. Um, in the last year, we've started, we have, we've had this uh, Java tapestry stack, and it really got to be too heavy for the orders of magnitude that things keep bumping, because in bioinformatics, you know, just the scale keeps increasing by an order of magnitude every two years. In 2004, we sequenced, and annotate, we sequenced annotated, and published four genomes in a year. Last month, we did 36 in one day we're kind of expecting in the next couple of years to have another order of magnitude jump, and so we're really having to look critically at all of our production processes and say, what's going to scale up and serve us well in the future? Our web portal was not doing a good job for us, but we had this unique constraint that we had to live with the five terabytes of data that we already have. Uh, luckily, we found this wonderful web application framework called Flask, which is data agnostic. It really doesn't imp impose any model structure. So we can come in and write our new application and kind of shear our stack and from here down we just you know developed a, a wonderful abstraction interface for objects called toothpick uh, written by my colleague Andrew Roberts that'll be open source in the later half of this year it's really allowed us to put in a wonderful light flask application that has uh, that's going to serve three million pages by the end of the year to, you know over 200,000 unique visitors researchers throughout the world who are looking to contribute to the study of malaria, tuberculosis, so on and so forth. So you're mostly studying uh, microbes and viruses, things that cause disease? Is that yeah, what we're not pathogens. not uh, sequencing butterflies and stuff like that no, here? No, you know, we started off being a little more distributed, but, you know, we found we kind of found our niche in pathogens. People are really interested in why curing malaria is such a hard problem, and it turns out that the genetic research that we do helps us understand exactly why that is and there are these wonderfully complicated and beautiful processes that go on in these pathogens that make them so hard to get rid of. It's really amazing that we've gotten rid of any at all given what we've learned now but uh, it really it, this software and our ability to be flexible with it, be agile, is what helps us and our scientists be able to make these discoveries. In the last couple of years though, I mean we, we've had to invent, when we started eight years ago we had to invent a lot of the technology that uh, we needed. You know, there, we had MapReduce before anybody had labeled it MapReduce. But in the last couple of years, we've really tried to isolate parts of our software infrastructure that could benefit the community. And so we have two projects that we want to just very briefly highlight. Um, naming genes is actually pretty challenging. Um, Assigning function automatically is very difficult, and so for other bioinformaticians who are looking to do this, we have a, a package that comes from you know five or six years of just elbow grease, and uh, it's available on SourceForge. It's Gene Pigeon. You can download it and let it help you try to figure out what your genes do. Another problem that has uh, come up for us is that you know we've really been in the business of you know harder, better, faster, stronger, just orders of magnitude. But really, living with data long term is a challenge, and as we're, you know, the next level of computation is not necessarily going to be another pathogen. It's going to be, can we do this other one better? The problem is that if you're referencing one particular gene in a paper and you're trying to figure out, you know, you're just about to go to press with your new study and you go and look at our website and, you know, it turns out that that gene has split into two genes. Well, that's a problem. And that's a problem that people throughout our industry face. 
we're developing a toolkit to help people draw those connections between the genes that we've published and the ones that are being the, the current representation of it. That's going to be integrated on our website and also you know, downloadable for general use. And so really that's, that's how our organization uses Python and Jython to do our wonderful sequencing, annotation, and analysis work. A wonderful case story of the success of Jython in the real world. We're pleased.